What is up, you guys? Thank y'all so much for tuning in. So this week, I have the 2018 Lexus LS 500 with the executive package. Big thank you to Lexus USA for sending me this car to review for you guys this week. Also, thank you to my buddy Eric, who helped me film this entire review. I wanted to get the best quality, and here's even a few pictures that he shot. I posted these on Instagram. You guys can also follow him on Instagram by clicking the links in the description. This will, of course, be my full in-depth review of the LS500. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoy the review. Be sure to share, subscribe, all that good stuff. But let's go ahead and jump into the car. So this is, like I said, the LS500 with the executive package. It's priced at $107,090. It is a beautiful, beautiful vehicle. It's finished off in this sort of grayish brown color. It almost looks like a champagne color. It is just a super long, elegant looking sedan. And I personally think it's one of Lexus's best looking sedans right now. The spindle grille is probably my favorite on this car. It just has a very, very good look to it. It's not too crazy, not too out there. It actually looks really elegant. I love the webbing of the design. Now the lights have this really cool sort of frayed look to the LEDs. You even have a Lexus uh, stamp at the top and at night it looks absolutely incredible. It just looks so menacing and you can really see all the detail in the headlamps. And the headlamps actually do a very good job. I live out here in Fort Worth, Texas and they do a great job of helping me see out on these dark roads. It even has a feature where you turn the steering wheel to the left or right, it'll illuminate and then that'll come back down very slowly when you turn the steering wheel back to straight. It does have 19 inch chrome wheels. They look okay. Um, I would prefer to have the upgraded eight, uh, I'm sorry, 20 inch wheels that go on this. And then when you move to the back, it's just very simplistic, basically the opposite of the front. Just really simple chrome bar in the middle, your LED lights up top, and boom, just a real nice clean design. Now as far as the key, uh, your Lexus key is really nice. It's got a heavy feel to it. Your standard buttons, your Lexus badge on the back. Now you can lock the door and that will fold the mirrors in and of course when you unlock it the mirrors will fold back out you can get into the car that way or you can use the keyless entry where you put your thumb on top locks the door mirrors once again will fold in and you can put your hand on the touchpad behind and then the mirrors will fold out also if you forget to close your door correctly the lexus has got you covered there as well all right so inside of the ls500 we'll take a look at the door for you guys you have all kinds of beautiful stitching that's going to run all along here the leather quality is really soft there's stitching literally everywhere you have this really nice sort of floating design on the armrest all of your window mirror controls if you come up a little bit you're going to have more stitching there and just a really nice door I love the way the door handle looks and then you've got the wood surround coming all right here and literally the entire door is going to be leather it's very nice so we'll go ahead and shut the door really really solid I don't think a single thing jiggled or fell out of place really solid door click when you open it really nice Look at the inside for you guys. And of course this is push start. So just put your foot in the brake and press this to start. All right, so coming through the interior. So first of all, the steering wheel, it's really, really nice. Sorry, I'm gonna turn the fan down real quick. Even though it is 104 degrees out here, it is absolutely insane. But nice steering wheel, you're going to have leather here, leather here, stitching all right here. You've got this beautiful wood accent right there. If you guys can see that coming up more leather with stitching in between there. Coming up some more, you have more leather, more wood. And everything just looks very, very nice. You have your uh, magnesium paddle shifters back here look really great even the buttons have this sort of brushed aluminum finish to them really nice and of course your aluminum finish coming right in between the buttons as well and your Lexus symbol right in the middle now over to the left you do have all your buttons to control your screen so you can flip through left up right down um, 
do all kinds of different things, go through all of your information so you can see things like how many miles you have left till empty, your eco indicator, your boost pressure, tire pressure, sway warning, and then all kinds of different things. 16.6 um, .6 miles per gallon is what I've been averaging, which really isn't too bad. Now you do have this button here, so you're going to push that button, it'll take you back to your previous menus and things like that. Your uh, phone commands for your Bluetooth, voice commands, volume commands. Over here to the right, you're going to have your cruise control, so you're going to push that, turn on your cruise control. Of course, push this to set, you can adjust your speed there. Cancel your um, adaptive cruise, so how, many, how much distance you want behind the car in front of you. Your lane keep assist, and you also have sort of a mild pilot assist, and I'll show you guys how that works later on in the video. Different modes, AM, FM, FM, XM radio, and then your previous and next right there. Now, of course, you do have automatic headlights, and you're going to push the button on the outside right there to turn on your automatic high beams. Over to the right, you have automatic wipers as well. Now, even the gauge cluster is surrounded in leather all over here, which looks really, really nice fully digital display. Now you do have different driving modes over here to the right. So as I turn this dial, it's going to adjust the screen. So you have Sport, Sport Plus. You're going to push this in on the side. It's going to take you to normal. So between normal, comfort, and eco, there's really no difference except for the blue color change in eco. But normal and comfort basically look exactly the same, and that's the same with Sport and Sport Plus. And of course over to the right you have a actual physical um, needle for your fuel and over to the left you have a physical needle for your water temperature. Now coming over here you are going to have your HUD button so you can turn on and off your HUD. Uh, your view which is your camera you're going to push that. That'll turn on your camera. And it's the lowest resolution like first generation computer graphics camera that I've ever seen. Probably one big complaint about this car is that it just looks super, super cheap. Um, as a matter of fact, that is the exact same image you get in the Toyota Camry XSE. So sorry to any LS500 owner that feels offended by that because I would be if I just spent almost 110 grand on a vehicle. So coming back over here, you do have a button right here. Crazy part about this button, I forgot to get it on camera, but it does actually illuminate at night so even this little tiny button will illuminate but you open that up and it's felt line so you can put any kind of change or anything you want to put in there which is really nice coming above you have this beautiful chrome accents that are going to just flow over here and it's going to follow the curvature all the way down to the other end of the car and it looks absolutely beautiful now coming up you do have your vent there Everything is lined in leather here, leather here, leather up here, and the leather's going to fold all the way there. It's going to meet you at the top. To the left, you have your trash control. Push in, snow, push down. Your head to display is right up there. Now coming along the dash, you have more stitched leather, which looks amazing. It almost creates a sort of shelf look, if you guys can, can see that. It is crazy. And then you have your Lexus clock right there. Of course, your screen, which is really nicely uh, integrated into the entire dash. Now over here to the right, you have this little area which basically doesn't do anything. It just It's just a design cue, but it looks really nice. It does illuminate at night, so it looks really, really cool. Now coming down, you have all of your buttons for your HVAC and your volume. So your volume button's gonna be on top. You're gonna turn this knob up here. For your volume below that is your tune, which is great, and that's all surrounded by that same brushed aluminum look and leather, of course. Even this has a great look to it. All the graphics in, in this car look really cool, except for that 360 camera. Now, the fan vents are right here, all of your different zones, seek track radio media, so you have extra buttons there, your hazards are right in the middle. Coming below that, you're going to have your brake hold, which is right here. CD player, for those of you that still like to listen to your CDs, eject over here, over here, of course, more of that brushed aluminum look, Mark Levinson sound system, 
The shifter is a little bit of, well, it is basically Prius style shifter. So drive, so left up for reverse. And your backup camera comes up. Now, same thing with this backup camera. It is sort of low resolution, but this one is very, very high resolution. The 360 camera looks really nice. I do like that a lot. Pulled it to the left to put it into neutral. And then once you're in drive, you can pull this down to put it into its manual mode and then P for park. And you have more of that beautiful wood right here. I'm going to push this to reveal your cup holders. Your Lexus, tra Lexus trackpad, which I'm not a super huge fan of. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not the best to use when you're driving. It's very, very distracting, very hard to use, but you basically scroll through here and it's really nice. Um, using it is, like I said, not a problem. It's really just when you're driving. Now coming down here, you have these full metal buttons, which look fantastic. This one is going to raise the ride height so that way the car can sit a little bit higher, makes everything a little bit more comfortable and softer when you're riding on long trips. This is going to control the screen in the back. So if I push that button, it's actually going to fold down my screen. If you guys can see that back there, And then right back up. And then finally, you have your seat adjustment button. So if I push that, I can go through and do all of my front massage seats, my driver massage seats, my seat climate, and everything like that. Now you do have a button here to open the console from my side. I also have a button on the passenger side, which I can push to open it from their side as well. Decent amount of storage space, two USBs, one auxiliary. 12 volt as well. Got the key in here. A nice little tray, and of course, everything is lined in felt, so it looks really nice. Now, coming up, you do have your mirror here with your home link located at the bottom of that. Coming up, you are going to have your touch sensitive lights, so when you just tap it ever so slightly, it'll turn on and turn off. Even your sunglass holder is lined in felt, that way, it won't scratch your sunglasses. You have speakers up here on both sides. Even your handles here are lined in leather and they have stitching right in the middle with aluminum accents. And then of course your moonroof here. Not going to open it, sorry guys, it's just way too hot today. But that's about it for the front. We'll go ahead and hop in the back and check out the back seat room. All right, so one small detail I forgot to mention is the seat belts will illuminate at night. That way you can see where they are. They also will automatically pull themselves in tighter when you click the seat belt. All right, so sitting in the back seat of the LS500, I've got a really good amount of room. Of course, this does have the executive package, so I have plenty of space back here. The real fun happens though when you fold down this armrest. So when you fold this down, it's really, really large, really heavy, and you have this tablet style screen right in the middle. You push the home button, that's gonna turn it on, and you have all kinds of different settings. I can turn on my cooled seats from here, my heated seats, I can adjust my temperature back here, um, I can scroll that down, adjust all the audio. Basically, I can do anything from this screen, but the coolest part is when you go to your seat settings, I can go through here, I can, move the front seat forward if there's nobody there. The headrest will fold down, that way I have a clear view of what the driver's seeing, so you can make sure your driver is not driving like a complete uh, psycho, I guess. But it moves all the way forward to where I have plenty of room to stretch out. I'm six feet tall, and I have plenty of leg space back here. The other part is I can click to where my seat will just relax all the way to the back so once you're leaning back, basically, I can fold these back so that way I have a really comfortable headrest. Um, you can also go back through the settings, go back to my seat settings, and I can adjust this little leg rest at the bottom. So once I find that, I can move this up and this leg rest will go all the way up. If you guys can see that. And at that point, I can just put my feet up, relax, 
and enjoy the drive. So I think the only thing really that this is missing is I feel like I need some sort of tray or something to come out that way I can like eat on or have my laptop out or something like that. Uh, I feel like it'd be perfect for like editing on the go. It's pretty cool. And then of course you can put everything back to its normal setting. So if I wanted to go back to my regular seat setting, that will go back. Everything will go right back to the way it was. Now the other cool thing is I can adjust all the sunshades. So there's buttons in here I can go through, adjust the sunshades. You even have a sunshade for this tiny little screen, this tiny little window back here you have a sunshade for. So that was pretty crazy. Uh, you also have your own personal shade for your roof. So you can open that, which is pretty cool. And if you don't feel like being bothered with lifting your hand up to turn on your lights, you can turn on your lights from the tablet as well which is pretty neat. You do also have a little mirror, so when you fold this mirror down, uh, you can definitely see yourself adjust anything you need to adjust. You have like a Sephora style light. It's so bright, so vivid. And of course you have your Mark Levinson speakers here. Um, and everything is just extremely luxurious back here. It's great, your cup holders are right up front. And you even have storage space in here with two USB ports. That way you can plug in your own iPod, your iPhone, anything like that. So that's pretty much it for the back seat, you guys. We'll go ahead and check out the trunk. So coming to the trunk of the LS500, there is a button located right underneath here. You're gonna push that button and it is automatic. So the trunk is gonna open automatically and you have a really good amount of trunk space back here. So we have a lot of our bags, a lot of our camera gear back here and it fits very, very easily. The only thing is the seats don't fold down because you do have the executive style seats in the back the rear seats aren't going to fold down, so you do lose that trunk space. Uh, you also don't have a spare underneath here, so you do have your run flat tires. Uh, but other than that, it's a decent amount of trunk space. We'll go ahead and check out underneath the hood. All right, so under the hood sits a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6. It's going to make 416 horsepower, 440 pound-feet of torque sent to the rear wheels through a 10-speed automatic transmission. So let's go ahead and see how it does. All right, you guys, so setting off behind the wheel of the 2018 Lexus LS500. So back to the motor, this is a 3.5 liter twin turbocharged V6. It makes 416 horsepower, and that is not shabby by any means. That is, that is a pretty good amount of power, and it all comes on very, very smooth. You would not even be able to tell that this thing is turbocharged it's that smooth so if you're driving this car you're really not winning i mean sorry but the point of this executive package if you get this specific car that i have with the executive package i mean the whole point really is you not only buy this car but you buy yourself a driver to drive you to the places that you need to go if you're a CEO, you're making a, let's say an hour long commute, you need to do work on the go, you're sitting in the back on your laptop, on a phone call, whatever you're doing, and just relaxing until you have to go to wherever your next meeting is or until you have to go to a presentation or anything like that. That's truly what this car is for. But the LS is offered in other trim levels, of course, like the F Sport, which is sportier. It's not meant to drive someone around. It's just meant to be a long, luxurious sedan. So. Since I don't have someone to drive me around, I'm going to review it from that perspective um, because obviously we know that sitting in the back while you're going on a long cruise is absolutely phenomenal, especially when you're reclined out. So speaking of ride quality, this thing rides so incredibly well. The suspension on here is so well controlled. The way it soaks up the bumps is interesting. So it's not like it completely gets rid of the bumps. You know that they're there but they don't like as a driver I see them coming and I can hear the car moving about but it doesn't really translate to me physically I don't really physically feel it as much as you would think that you would if that makes sense so getting on the power a little bit Woo! it's got a good amount of go I totally said getting on the power a little bit and I just full-on like almost floored it but anyways, 
You can switch different modes. I'm actually just in eco mode. So if you flip the switch up, it'll take you to sport. One more time, we'll take you to sport plus. Now automatically, it's not in the paddle shift setting. You have to pull the shifter back and that'll put you into your manual setting. You have your 10 speed. So I'll shift down into, let's say, third gear into this corner. Oof. It handles really, really well. Shifts are pretty good. They don't, the shifts don't really have a defined shiftiness to them. So basically what I mean is when I downshift, the downshifts are probably a little bit more crisp. But then when I upshift, it's kind of a lazy shift. So when you shift, it's kind of like, Mama. <laughs> it's so weird, but you guys get the point. So with the RCF that I reviewed um, a few a few months ago, probably uh, great car. It had a good eight speed. And I wonder if this works the same as that does. So basically it would shift faster the harder you got onto the acceleration. So let me go ahead and Flip it in a second, I'm cruising at around 4,800 RPMs. I'm just gonna lay into it and then shift. So it's a little better, it's a little better. And this thing really, really pushes. This thing is quick, guys, it is really, really quick. Now, let's go ahead and put it back into drive mode because not many people will drive this that way. I'm gonna go to put it into its comfort setting. You do have cruise control, so I can put it on cruise control. And you do have a steering assist feature, which is basically a mild autopilot, a very, very mild autopilot. Uh, Lexus doesn't advertise it as such, but that's what it is. So I can essentially be driving right now. So in my heads up display, it shows me the two lines, which obviously is for my lane keep. But then once you're able to put on the steering assist, it almost shows like rails as if you're like bowling and you know how those rails come up it almost looks like that um, around the white line so at that point you can essentially take your hands off the wheel it does tell you to put your hands on the wheel every probably 30 seconds or so so if i were driving now i could completely just take my hands off and it's just keeping me in a very very straight line it does a pretty good job um, of course any kind of mildly tight corner it just completely um doesn't do a good job <laughs> so we'll go ahead and take control again but the other thing is just once again like I said the ride comfort just the luxuriousness of this car my favorite thing about this car is this sound system this has a 2400 watt 23 speaker Mark Levinson sound system it is hands down the best sound system I've heard in any car for the longest time my number one was the um, Bowers and Wilkins sound system in the Volvo S90 or just any Volvo that has the Bowers and Wilkins uh, was absolutely fantastic. This actually isn't better by much, but the clarity on the sound system is just absolutely impressive. It is so impressive. And if you like music, I love music. And if you, if you love hearing the detail stuff about um, your music, it does a very good job of just highlighting all the small details going on in the background like I'm pretty sure I heard things that I didn't even know that were there in the song it's really really good so the seats of course are very nice uh, all four seats have massage settings they have cooled settings and they have heated settings uh, your heated and cooled do have three settings to them so your low your middle of the way and then of course your full-on heat or full-on cool it's very good. Now the heads-up display is massive. It is, it takes up probably a fourth of the windshield. It's very, very big. The only thing about it, and I had the same problem with the Toyota Camry that I reviewed that has a similar heads-up display, is it's not easy to focus on. I don't know if it's the pixels. I don't know if the windshields are like slightly warped, but it's really, it's not difficult to focus on, but it's not the easiest. I've seen tons of other heads-up displays 
where the clarity is so good, it's like I can literally just glance at it and then glance right back up. With this one, I have to glance at it and then slightly, ever so slightly focus my eyes. Um, it's really a small detail, it's not that big of a deal, but when you're in a car like this, it is those details that make the biggest difference. So I did wanna point that out. Um, another thing is this trackpad. I absolutely hate this trackpad and I cannot wait for Lexus to come out with something different. I actually quite enjoy the infotainment system itself. I think it is really, really nice. I personally like it. I don't mind that it doesn't have Apple CarPlay or anything like that because I like how Lexus is trying to just fully immerse you in their experience and not bringing in a third party to add some sort of extra experience. They want you to be fully immersed in what Lexus has to offer and that's it. There's so many screens and menus you have to flip through. For example, to get to my cooled or heated seats, there's not a button. There's not a button anywhere for my cooled or heated seats. So I can either use the trackpad, go over to climate, and then I've gotta go over to the left to seat steering, then I have to go over to the right, click my heat or my cool, but then once I click it, I have to scroll up and then click again to like save that in there. It's such a ridiculous process. And it's even worse if you're looking to a radio station. You can't even flip through uh, radio stations on satellite XM radio while you're driving. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. But I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this review. That's pretty much it. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, be sure to click up to the left. Would love to have you guys subscribe to the channel. I upload new videos every single week, so be sure you guys turn on that notification bell and stay tuned for that. If you wanna see some more of my other reviews, I did mention the Lexus LC500 review. You can click over to the right if you guys wanna see that. I also have a Tesla Model 3 review you guys can check out. And then there's one more review that I'll probably switch out every so often that you guys can click as well. But thank y'all for watching, and y'all take care. Bye.